the question is, will this truck start without, <laughs> without being jumped? I don't know, but we're about to find out. And if you're wondering, yes, it was fun getting the seat out of this thing. Oh man, freaking mess, I'm telling you what. A mess. The dash is turning on. Fuel pump cycling. So it does have some kind of power. Voltage isn't reading much, but it does have some kind of power. So let's see if this thing can be started or not. Looks like she's still gonna need a jump. I kinda figured it's been a few months. All hooked up and ready to give her another try. Let's see if she'll go this time. Nasty Red did have a little bit of an idle issue too, so this is gonna be kind of interesting. It will be interesting. Now I'm gonna try to get in the truck actually and back it up and get her away from the spin so we can get the seat in a little bit easier. Tell you that is not fun <laughs> driving it driving it without a seat like uh, it, it's pretty weird now let me go get that seat lack of glove we're good to go on our way with this incredible dodge steering right here and uh you, know, you can bounce that wheel any which direction and it'll still just be going straight it's kind of amazing but Anyway, so we're almost to the property where we're gonna be showing you guys something that uh, I think you guys are gonna like to see back here on the channel in good health. I and mean, you might see where I'm going with this. It might be in the title, I don't know. We're about to pull up to the barn. We're gonna give you guys kind of a rundown on what the plans are for a couple of these trucks that have been kind of ghosting you guys in the channel. By the way, if you want to win the truck, we call the second gen Longhorn, the red regular cab, 12 out five speed. Every $5 is five entries to win. That is our five for five deal on right now. Just been entered to win that truck. It ends February 18th. That's when the giveaway ends. And if you're wondering, it sounds like, oh, that's a whole month away. It's not a whole month away. In fact, it's only a little bit over two weeks away, and then that giveaway's gone. And here we are. The first gen is back. Dad picked it up from getting it fixed. If you guys are wondering whose truck this is, yes, it is my father's truck. This is one that he bought three years ago now. 85,000 original miles on it, original transmission, paint, I mean everything, um, which is gonna be changing soon in terms of some of that stuff. This is also his truck. He bought this one the same year he bought that one and got on a little 12 valve kick and now he's got a first gen and a second gen. This truck, however, he's considered selling, ice sliding off the roof of the barn. He's actually went back and forth um, contemplating selling this truck and just restoring this one and he just doesn't like, obviously you don't need three trucks. I mean, I have three trucks right now. He has three trucks right now, he had four, but it's just not necessary to own certain trucks that you just don't get to use and you rather just you know, have the money to put into your other trucks when they're not being used to their fullest or used for what they're meant for. So he's considered selling his truck, whether he does or not, I don't know. Let's talk about the first gen. For everybody wondering about the first gen and what actually happened with the truck, the truck had a major high idle problem. In other words, throttle issue. It was like when you started that truck, it was revving over 2000 RPM and it's it was like at 850, then 1000, then 1400, then 1600, and just 2000, then over that. And so I was, I just thought, you know, I'll get to it, I'll fix it, I'll fix it, you know, whatever, just tell them I'll fix it. Well, everything that I tried to do to it didn't change anything. It still had the major high idle and throttle issue, and it was just getting worse and worse and worse. So I, I, I just officially told them, I'm like, hey, you're just gonna have to get it towed somewhere. I thought I'd be able to figure it out, but I just don't know what the problem is unless I rip that pump off and look through it, which I'm not really gonna know what I'm looking for other than stuff that clearly looks bad. You're gonna have to have somebody that knows it they're doing go through this pump because I don't know a thing about them and I don't want to damage your pump or damage your truck or get the pump off and then we can't figure out what the problem is and 
then you have a whole bunch of other issues. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna get it towed over. So we got a free tow over to a local shop. They went through the pump that day and they said, uh, yeah, there's metal shavings in the pump and good thing he got it in now because it was about to take out even more of the pump on the inside, wherever he's talking about. And it just would have been almost like a runaway diesel and it just would have been really, really bad. So good thing you got it in when you did. They charged him a hefty price to get that fixed. I think my dad said that they charged him $2,000 just to take the pump off and remanufacture it or go through it and rebuild a bunch of stuff inside of it apparently and then put it back on the truck. But yeah, just not cool. It would have been a lot more expensive if the entire engine went and then you just got a good looking truck with no engine that's functioning properly. So anyways, that's kind of the deal with that truck and that's why it was gone. And that's kind of why we didn't run it for so freaking long is just because of that issue and not wanting to try to figure out what it was. And then when I did try to figure out what it was, couldn't find anything. So that's the whole deal on that truck. You guys are probably also wondering, well, what's the plan for this truck? What's the plan for that truck? Uh, to be truthful, guys, I really don't know. With these two trucks, they're not mine. These are my dad's two trucks, and that's why it's kind of like one of those things to where, like my trucks, I have them, we build them and do cool you know, stuff to them. Sometimes little stuff, sometimes big stuff, and then you know they're on their way and gone. With his trucks, he's not in the diesel giveaway business. He's not in the YouTube business, so he buys trucks that he likes, and he'll just slowly, as time goes on, do stuff to them that he likes to do to them, just because it's like, a a hobby but not a full-blown business like what I do that's why I go through so many trucks and that's why his trucks are just kind of like these are my trucks I'm gonna fix my trucks up for me and that's pretty much it but since it's not a business he's not gonna go dumping tons of money into the trucks when there's more important things he'd rather be sinking money into to grow a business or other things like that along the lines of that or invested or other stuff so it's just not the same situation and that's why these trucks have been on the channel a lot longer but in terms of this truck it is gonna be getting new paint soon and we kind of mentioned that before that, you know, we're going to be doing new paint to the truck and all that jazz. And it'll probably be getting dropped off here within the next couple of days. And if you look at the truck, you're probably going to see a few spots that need worked on. Lower portion of the fender there, rocker. Back corner, you can see a little bit of rust starting to crack through there. And I don't know if that's like really bad or if it's just like a little bit of surface bubbling. I don't know. Miguel will have to tell us on that and get his opinion. Back over here, got some rust starting up top. And then the fenders are where the, the big stuff is. That's where most of the rust is. In terms of the frame, the frame's actually in pretty darn good condition. It's it's really not bad. There's really, it's just got a little surface rust on it. Tailgate, we took the badging off of that because we were gonna have those holes filled. Come back to this side, you've got the rust on the fender there. A Little bit of rust on the lower front fender on this side, but not much, real small spot. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Most of it's on the driver's side for whatever reason. I don't know. Paint color. I'm pretty sure my dad's just gonna go white again. It's just too much of a classic color, a clean color. It just kind of fits these old trucks. And if you ask me, it just screams old classic farm truck when it's white with the Mickey Thompsons in some mud terrains to me. That just screams old school cool. Fits the truck, if you ask me. We're actually going to start this truck up and let you hear how it sounds. But let's first pop this hood and see if we can notice anything different under here in terms of what they did. I'm not sure if you'll be able to notice anything since it was an internal issue or not, but we'll find out. Okay, yes, lots of new, <laughs> lots of new you can definitely see. Um, you can see how all of the pump has been basically redone, repainted, Everything looks brand new and different. This is still the original little plastic part there. And this little head down here, that's a plastic one. I don't really like that. I think it's a little bit cracked, uh, which is kind of an issue. It's never fallen off, but it is cracked. If you ask me, I think it is cracked on one of these plastic heads because I went through it at one point trying to mess with the idle problem and seeing if that was it. And I was like, ah, that's cracked. But anyway, so the pump's all repainted. It's been gone through and everything else. Um, and it, it does look good. It does look good and they did a good job. No leaks. I did just have it running for a couple minutes. No leaks underneath there. Um, everything's perfect. I mean, it looks great. Let's see how this thing sounds starting up for you guys, since you guys haven't heard this thing run properly in a long time. You guys can be the judge of how it sounds. But I think it sounds and smells just like that John Deere 4220 over there. One of my favorite things about these trucks is just the sound and the smell of diesel. As soon as you start about every time, it's just 
are just amazing. That's how a truck's supposed to sound. So I've got a big question for you guys. So. I know that for the most part, and another thing, the second gen Longhorn, if you saw yesterday's video, you guys know that there was a little mishap with that. It's all getting fixed right now and it'll be back probably tomorrow. It was literally just the dumbest little stupid, yeah, just gouges in the corners of the hood. Like not even like down in the corners, like let me let me show you on this truck. It was really strange because it wasn't like down in here or down in here where you think or up in here. It was like right here. That's why it doesn't make any sense. It's like these little like nicks that probably were like, I don't know, they're maybe like, in, in uh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, little tiny gashes in the hood, and it just kind of like chipped the paint off on each side in the same spot. So how that happened, I don't know, but the hinges are getting repainted right now and that's getting all fixed. My bent guys said the hood's in great shape still. It's not that mu that big of a deal. He's just gonna have to re-clear the entire hood after he sands and fixes and matches that just so it all blends together. But in terms of my next question, like everybody that started out watching the videos of that truck, know that that truck started out in rough shape, not very clean, not very nice, interior was horrible, but the things that I liked about that truck, let me tell you, floorboards, no rust. Cab mounts, no rust. The frame, a little bit of surface rust, but nothing crusty, not like you're not gonna hit it with a hammer, just see rust chunking off everywhere, not like that. Like to where you can rub a little dust off, but it's not, not nasty, almost like gravel dust type of rust. But for the most part, that truck was clean in terms of rot, no rotting on the truck but it had dents, dings, scratches, gashes. It had a little teeny tiny bit of like a quarter size rust spot on each rear fender, but that's just about it. And I remember when I picked that truck up, most people are like, oh dude, why'd you buy that thing? Like, oh my gosh, like I almost threw up in my mouth a little bit. Like it was a rough truck, I will admit. It was, it was pretty bad, but I had the vision. When I saw that truck, I was like, man, this is a beauty. I'm like, this is a gem of a truck. And my wife's like, that is a pile of junk, dude. Like, do not buy that truck, please. I'm like, but just think about the potential. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, 7,500 bucks? I'm like, listen, we can do paint body work, custom interior and sound system and all this stuff, and we'll still be in like less than 18 grand. We'll have like a fully custom built truck instead of buying one that's done with 200,000 miles and they still want 18 grand, you know? And so she's like, okay, let's go for it, whatever. Couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Like it just came together. So my question is for our next transformation truck, and I do want to do another one that was like that in a sense, do we go with a first gen Longhorn or first gen Limited and do like a cool custom like black and white diamond stitched interior like black leather with white threading diamond stitch and leather wrap like the dash and the ceiling diamond stitch. I mean just everything with like new black carpet like I'm talking gut the interior and redo it do the exterior like a diamond black like just not diamond pattern but like clean kind of like my dually my limited dually that I had and do like a limited edition first gen oh that would just mm, perfect that would be so pretty so I'm thinking about doing that or we can do another longhorn first gen not another another longhorn style truck but more in depth on a first gen or do we go with a 734 either an obs or like my dad's white 73 that he had like an o2 style and do like a platinum or king ranch basically build of what that truck could have looked like if it came from the factory even a little bit more detail than a factory would give it in terms of just touch and like feel what do you guys think take your votes down in the comment section below because we're looking to buy a new project soon we also have a bunch of stuff we're gonna be doing to Frosty if it doesn't get picked, and if the fourth gen doesn't get picked, and I, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. But anyways, with that giveaway ending, fourth gen or Frosty could be going. We should have a video for you guys tomorrow on who the winner is. We should find out who won and which truck the winner's picking. Keep in mind, fourth gen is a 2015 Tradesman with 60-ish, like 55, can't remember, I think it's 58,000 miles on it. And then the 9612 valve, we just got a whole bunch of stuff done to that. Like I'm talking, a ton of stuff done to that. We should actually, we might have that in the next video. I don't know, we gotta pick it up. You should see it in the next video. But anyways, that truck comes with $5,000 cash and it's a five speed manual 12 valve and you can get 38s on it or you can take the 24 by 14s and 35s, that's up to you. But anyways, in terms of the next build, tell me down in the comment section below, which should we go with and why you think that's a better choice. Guys, thank you so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up, leave your comments down in the comment section below. Do not forget to enter to win the second gen Longhorn project because every $5 is $5 entries to win right now that's a five for five deal we're running and you could be the owner of that truck plus five thousand dollars of cold hard cash to go with it thank you guys so much i'll catch you in the next video peace